of sports. Well, the one that I played that I, I didn't shoot a hundred threes in a row, but go. Um, I like that. That's that, that was almost there. You almost got. That's the, the color thing you were talking about. I know, about. but you almost got to the top well, level right there. I'm with learning. The, well, yeah, I'm learning. Yeah, I'm we'll learning. have a conversation after the show. Okay. Right. Um, Paul, <laughs> who's our player spotlight this week? Well, yeah, so I knew you'd be super excited about this because you're a soccer guy, and so this is my first time bringing to light a soccer player. And so I went to Clovis North, and they got a stud soccer player named Christian Silva. He's a four-year guy. This is going to be his fourth year uh, on varsity. Um, yeah, he's just one of those goal scorers, just one of those elite soccer players that, that you can pick out pretty quick while, while you're watching the soccer game. And obviously his opponent's, know who he is as well because they're they're marking this guy they're double teaming him all the time um so last year as a junior he scored 36 goals and had 12 assists um and gonzo you could probably speak more to how incredible this is so he played a part in 48 of the team's 64 goals last season so that's how much of a stud soccer player he is he's going to cal state northridge next year um and for our soccer fans out there um, Cal State Northridge is also the place that Danny Trejo of Mendota yeah. went to. And Trejo, Danny, uh, was the leading goal scorer in California history. He scored 200 goals in his career, and he actually just got drafted. So he's going to be playing pro soccer. But Christian, you know, he compares favor- favorably to uh, to Danny. Um, like I said, he's going to Cal State Northridge. Um, he's just, you know, he, he could score with either feet. He's technically sound. Um, and I first heard about him pretty early um, in his soccer career, and I saw him score a goal against Sunnyside his freshman year uh, in the playoffs. Um, he got an equalizer in, a, in stop time with about an under a minute to play, and it was just this phenomenal goal. And so, you know, an elite soccer player is certainly fun to watch, and Christian Silva is one of those dudes. Yeah, I, to, to Paul's point about being involved, did you said 48 out of the 64, if I remember that correctly? But yeah. Just about. We'll, we'll give that number. Um, and to give reference to what that feels like, I'm going to give a parallel to say your team scored 100 points in basketball, right? Let's just go with basketball. Your team scored 100 points. Essentially what this kid is able to do and has done is he's either scored or on assisted 80 of those points. It's basically what he has done. So either he scored or assisted on 80 points worth of those 100 points that were scored that game. That what he that's what he has done in a season. Um and, and that's just incredible and, and again as as a striker you usually do touch the ball a lot and you're able to bounce off but what Christian has done, and the reference to Danny Trejo, I think think is amazing, as as Danny comes through here. Um, I think what he has done, which is amazing, is Danny Trejo, is the fact that one he took advantage of the competition that was in front of him. I I, I officiated yeah. him quite a bit, so I'm not going to not put that there. But he was a talent, and he is a talent. And there's a reason why Danny Trejo has been drafted to the LAFC. Los Angeles Football Club in the MLS, and, and hopefully he has a really bright future ahead of him. But Christian, as you mentioned, is on that same path. And, and what he is doing right now at Clovis North, I've seen it firsthand as an official. Um, it, it, it's it's amazing. So as a soccer player, I can appreciate that heavily, and, and as an athlete, I think anybody can appreciate that. So let's talk about his academics. He's is he a good student, or Nick has something before that? Paul, I want to I want to say something. <clears throat> you mentioned, and, and Gonzo, you know this as well as anybody because you played the sport at a high level. My question is, and I, I recognize this with what you said, Paul. You you mentioned that you know his presence out there and what he's accomplished has created teams to figure out ways to try to guard him tighter. You know, I I look at you know great basketball players. You know, the being face guarded and Mm-hmm. And, and double teamed and and so it sounds like that's what's going on there yes. and, and how hard that is to do that but if you put all your effort into somebody and they're still able to perform and i always say you you don't know how good you are until the other the competition recognizes what you're doing and then if you're still able to do those things once they've put their best player on you 
that puts you at a different level. Yes. And it sounds like that's what we've accomplished here. 100%. 100%. Yeah. So, you know, when, when you're the best player on the field or best player on the court, everybody knows it. Your, your opposition knows, knows it. The coaches are game planning against that player, right? But it's those guys that can rise above that, those guys that can still find a way to get their team a win, whether it's an assist or a goal or, you know, in basketball, make that extra pass or, you know, pass out of the double team or whatever they do. You know, that's, that's next level stuff right there. That's, that's stuff that, that uh, coaches can build around. And, you know, that's, that's what's going to get, uh, you know, college, college coaches attention and all that. And, you know, when you can rise above that and still, you know, get the job done, you know, you just think about basketball, right? You think about some guy that comes in averaging 30 points a game and a coach puts in a game plan to stop them any which way they can and they still pump out 30 points. That's super impressive. And Christian Silva, I mean, that guy can do it on the, on the soccer field. Outstanding. Outstanding. Um, and so let, let's talk about his academics before I get back into the culture yeah. that has been built there soccer wise at Clovis North in, in, in boys and girls soccer. Yeah. So he's got a above 3.3 GPA. Um, you know, I had a great conversation with his coach, Cam Shiroki over there. He's a great coach. You talk about culture and, uh, you know, he's done a phenomenal job over there at Clovis North with the boys team and the girls program is, is, you know, one of the top teams in the track as well. But, you know, he, uh, I think he took some academics a little more serious later in his, in his high school career. And, um, you know, cause he had a goal, he wanted to play college soccer and he wanted to, you know, possibly go on and play pro soccer. And so he got a little more serious and he's doing fantastic in the classroom. Like I said, he's got an over 3.3 GPA and, you know, colleges aren't going to, you know, they're not going to look at you at all if you got bad grades. And so he's yeah. definitely put a lot of effort, not only in the soccer field, but in his, in the classroom. And that's one of the biggest things that we've had a conversations about just in general, that what, what sports does to an academic part of a student athlete. It, it, it pushes them to be good inside the classroom because if they have the talent enough to go to the next level, one, you need those grades to be there, and two, even if you don't, it pushes you to want to be eligible to play, which then helps you in the long run regardless. So let, let's turn around and let's talk about that culture that they've built there at Clovis North because the Clovis North – women's soccer team or the girls soccer team uh just lost last season in the i believe it was a quarterfinals in the fi- yeah in the the, the quarterfinals the finals well it, it could be the question uh, i don't know it was the state quarterfinals if i remember correctly because i was the official on that game. Were you the, were you the guy I was yelling at? <laughs> I, I, I'm giving some big news here if you have any gripe to have, any issues with the officiating on that Clubbus North. I, think, I believe it was a, the quarterfinal state game from the center official. That was me on that game. Um, and I, I know that they have a great culture on the girls' side, and they've had it for a long time. But the, the boys have been in and out, and now it looks like they're settling back into that great culture they had built. Yeah, well, Cam has done a great job over there. He comes with a lot of experience. He played at, at Fresno City and does some coaching over there at Fresno City. And so one of the things that I enjoyed the last uh, few years, more so like a couple years ago, was going to soccer games. And I kind of stand behind the bench and, and, you know, observe coaches and observe the the uh, the players that, that aren't in the game and, and just kind of see the strategies and the coaching that goes on. And, you know, we talk about culture a lot and, and what it takes to, to win to win ball games and yeah culture is huge obviously and i definitely see it over there at clovis north i like what i see and, and yeah just talking about that game there was i, I just remembered as i'm, I'm talking and, and as paul is here and I, paul might have covered that i know a couple of other people that did and they were there they didn't know i was the center official I, i'm good in under, under disguise um but th- there was a couple of plays in that game that i believe clovis north should have won that game and again, as an official, you're not really paying attention to certain aspects, but you see when players are in front of the net and can't hit the net, and it just was one of those days for Clovis North that day. I believe that they won that one. They were going to go to the to the championship um, for the state. But look, let, let, let's have a conversation about soccer here, Paul. And, and what are you seeing around the valley or around the central section? Soccer, they're getting started too. And, and we haven't mentioned that. Maybe we can, we'll get Cam on next week to talk about what they're doing at, there at Clovis North and just in general. But what, what are you seeing around 
the central section, be it to soccer? Well, yeah, I mean, kind of lost in because I know we're so football heavy, right? We're so football centric. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about things opening up, we first naturally kind of go tell football, but kind of lost in last Friday's good news about uh, the, uh, some sports being moved up in tiers was that soccer got moved up along with football um, and water polo, right? So, yeah. yeah, so soccer's super excited. You know, and talking to Cam yesterday, they're, they're looking at a, already a game on the ninth, and they're looking at a full track or league schedule. I'm not sure about other school districts and where other teams are at, but right now the track is a go for 10, for yeah. 10 games, um, and they're even thinking that they might even have playoffs. Again, it, it wouldn't be out of uh, – out of county schools, but uh, you know they try to form some sort of a, a playoff system within the county. But yeah, so soccer is a go, and it's going to be here in a couple of weeks. I think that that's one of the benefits of soccer in this case is you can double you you can hit two games in one week, and so that's usually the case. They play Tuesday, Thursday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday. Usually not Monday, Wednesday. Usually Tuesday, Thursday, Wednesday, Friday, and you're able to to get ten games in in five weeks. Um, and, and even if you want, you could go into a little bit more games during the week, but then you're going into fatigue and in, in how the prepared the players are and able to play three times in a week, maybe once uh, in, in the season. But yeah, they're 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 definitely able to do it. And um, soccer is going to be interesting for me to see because as an official. I've officiated inside the system, and I've officiated really high-caliber games inside the Valley. I was just mentioning that quarterfinal state game that, that I was able to officiate for Clovis North, or not for Clovis North, but for the, the officiating group. That That's something that I want to mention here before we have to let Paul go is, Paul, officials, could, could we see the sense of certain districts, Clovis Unified, Fresno Unified, 